2017 may be in the rearview mirror, but as 2018 kicks into gear, the world waits with bated breath to see how the games industry is going to respond to the many issues regarding microtransactions and loot boxes. Arriving towards the end of the year, everything from the Belgian Gaming Commission investigating their very legality to Hawaii's government labeling Star Wars Battlefront 2 a Star Wars themed online casino, Apple forcing developers to disclose drop rates for apps, and even a full on boycott of blind box focused games on Black Friday, it's safe to say loot boxes' time has come. And honestly, it's been a long time coming. Paying full price for a game only to find that certain costumes, mechanics, or content is locked behind a random number generator has been the norm for far too long. And with 2017 reaching boiling point, it's not just Battlefront 2 that deserves to be torn to shreds. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 most predatory loot box systems in video games. Number 10, Mass Effect 3. One of the first non-sports games to put blind boxes into its multiplayer, Mass Effect 3 not only represented the death of one of gaming's most beloved sci-fi franchises across its campaign, but the introduction of a completely unnecessary competitive component too. Thing is, this could have been a delightful blend of various business opportunities. What with the fact that you could unlock more items if you bought an accompanying action figure or art book, but the reality was a system that was quite literally pay to win. Governing all content was a system of credits that could be used to purchase blind boxes containing weapons, mods, and other equipment. Naturally, you could play to open these like a sane person, or of course, cough up the cash for more currency, paying to equip the best gear and dominating your way to the top. Ex-Bioware developer Manvia Air recently confirmed that he once saw a player spend £15,000 on microtransactions in Mass Effect 3. It's these sorts of insane figures that ensured the practice would take off with publishers only concerned with making as much money as possible. Number 9, Destiny 2. Bungie's premier shooter is known for being very grind-heavy, what with all sorts of tie-in sponsorship deals easing the burden of running the same 10 missions for better loot, but progression is still inherently random. On the 25th of November, a notable swell in fan complaints highlighted the fact that the game's XP leveling was actually bugged, intentionally rewarding players with the same numerical amounts on screen, yet their progress bars increased slower. Why? Because Destiny's progression is predicated on unlocking blind box style bright engrams, which after hitting the soft level cap of 20 are given every time you max out your experience bar. More grinding means more incentive to splash out on engrams with real money. Yet thankfully Bungie have responded by doing an EA and admitting to the forced grind slash lower gain trade-off, eventually turning it off. Regardless, the fact remains, if an engram doesn't give you what you want, just run the same missions an endless amount of times, or of course you can purchase some pulls of the lever instead. Number 8, Forza Motorsport 7. Nothing is safe from being segmented out into a loot system, and 2017 saw the once mighty Forza franchise stoop to the lowest of the low. Now we have a series that used to be the bastion of the racing genre putting its fans at the mercy of mod cards. Pay to unlock variables that let you do things like race at night or in different weather conditions. Upon completion, you'll unlock more credits, which can help get better cars and parts, but once again, these very modifiers that make the game more interesting and exciting are locked behind a random number generator. The idea of game features such as race modifiers now being paid exclusives is ridiculous, and quite frankly, it's insulting to those who've stuck by Forza all this time. Number 7, Dead Space 3. One of the most egregious examples of EA realizing microtransactions were a thing post FIFA 09 and especially after Mass Effect 3, even the once atmospheric single player focused Dead Space arrived riddled with them for its third installment. Not content with bolting on a co-op campaign that made the whole thing into a mass market Gears of War clone, EA forced players to cough up additional cash for crafting parts and resources, just to get better weapons. And again, of course you could spend the time scavenging the landscape for the required components, or the microtransaction store is a click away. Visceral games were forced to implement this structure to encourage you into relenting, but as many reports later stated, the game was never supposed to have this system in the first place. Inevitably, all it contributed to was a broken progression, feeling very stilted and forced. Dead Space died with this entry, and Visceral Games ultimately paid the price four years later, having taken the brunt of mandated business decisions they couldn't say no to. Number 6, Need for Speed Payback. Back to driving games, and like Forza 7, Need for Speed Payback scatters its entire wealth of components across a loot system that very rarely kicks out what you want. What's worse is unlike Forza, upgrading your car with random parts is directly tied to progression, meaning you can't even take part in high-level races until your car is suitably tuned. Want to get the appropriate parts to hang with the big boys? You'll have to grind it out, hoping that your parts drop, or of course you can pay for more chances to spin the wheel again. I mean look, how bad is it going to get before developers realize this is a terrible way to make a game? Payback even visualizes you opening packs with a three-lane slot machine literally bringing about gambling mentalities and connoting the visuals of a casino. Why did EA think anyone would want this? Number 5, Plants vs Zombies 2. EA strikes again, doing what they do best as once beloved developer PopCap and the Plants vs Zombies franchise was quickly monetized by drilling some large microtransaction holes into its core. Mining the love that millions had to get the cash out, the worst was actually updating the app to the once replenishing life system now came with a price tag. If you wanted to rerun older levels, well, unless you could do the whole thing without any zombies making it across the screen, that'd be 99 cents. Otherwise, level failed. 
Holding people's enjoyment of a game to ransom is the through line you'll see in all of EA's blind box systems. And even Plants vs Zombies creator George Fan wasn't pleased with his game being bastardized in such a way, leaving EA earlier in 2017 to pursue greener, less money-grubbing pastures. Once again, a lucrative franchise blossoming in its own way, coming complete with scores of fans, only to be acquired by EA and driven straight into the ground. Let's just pray for Titanfall. Number 4. Middle-Earth Shadow of War over to Monolith and Warner Brothers, as after EA, WB should really be next on the chopping block. These are the guys that made Netherrealm put paid fatalities into Mortal Kombat, and in Shadow of War, you can tell they instructed Monolith to do the same with its orcs. Now we have a game where the duel between developer artistry and publisher meddling is clear for all to see. Combat and progression is solid and enjoyable, but then you realize the strongest orcs are tucked away inside loot boxes. And although you might say that it doesn't really matter and it's mostly avoidable for the majority of the campaign, the end game, named Shadow Wars, tasks you with defending a potentially never-ending stream of fortresses, to which you'll need the biggest and best orcs to stand guard. You can grind your way through, though it'll take an exorbitant amount of time, or cough up the cash to the in-game vendor who'll give you orcs in exchange for real money. Naturally, they always die after a handful of fights anyway, ensuring you go back for more. Number 3, Dungeon Keeper the 2014 Remake You can't escape EA's loot systems for too long, and we're back with a game that yes, released as free to play, but it didn't stop the publisher putting in one of the worst microtransaction systems in gaming history. Available as an app, the once glorious sensation of seeing your demonic abode come together was replaced by a more cartoonish horned reaper repeatedly badgering you to spend more cash. It really challenged the term free to play, so much that various European countries' commissions got involved, with Brussels stating that misleading consumers is clearly the wrong business model and it goes against the spirit of EU rules on consumer protection. Atta boy. By the time the dust had cleared, Dungeon Keeper was dead and buried, though thankfully the Bullfrog developed 1997 original remains a stellar experience. Number 2, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Easily the most high profile of all the games on this list in terms of what it means when a Star Wars product, i.e. something designed to be loved by all ages, is still predatory, Battlefront 2's loot box controversy is unprecedented. Not without good reason either, DICE designed a system of progression that is almost entirely random. Yes, you can get 200 kills to upgrade a specific weapon, but every other aspect, from taunts to damage boosts, crafting components to currency, is doled out at random. It's the game's decision to then layer on top constant reminders that the storefront is only a few button presses away, exchanging your real-world cash for in-game credits that becomes the biggest problem. You just know that you'll be grinding for hours and hours at a time. It was initially 40 hours per character, which has now been reduced, challenging those with a weaker will or more disposable income to buy their way through instead. Taken online, where Battlefront shows you which cards other players had equipped, again, another incentive to go buy them yourself, the whole thing feels designed to purposefully take advantage of the consumer. Overall, the game is a catastrophic letdown, something that looks exquisite but whose charms are only skin deep. Number 1, FIFA Ultimate Team. Onto the game that makes around $1.5 million every day, FIFA's Ultimate Team actually debuted back in another of EA's football games, UEFA Champions League 2006 to 2007. Yet it was CEO Andrew Wilson who wanted to trial the feature with a bigger audience. Naturally, the idea of pairing random card packs of players with an entire global audience all striving to have the perfect squad was lucrative beyond EA's wildest dreams, seeing them value the mode at $800 million a year. Recently, because of the fire Battlefront 2 started, FIFA fans have mobilized to boycott FIFA 18. Using the hashtag Fix FIFA, thousands decided to stop spending money on Ultimate Team in an attempt to send a message to EA. This is the first time the company has faced anything close to a major backlash across all their IPs, and it's all at once. Ultimate Team makes far too much money around the world to simply be overhauled overnight, but if changes can come, fans and viewers like yourself will have to keep the pressure on. And that's our list. Let us know in the comments what the worst and most predatory loot box and microtransaction systems are. I've been Scott from Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you soon.